Great. Thank you, Claudia. Uh, and uh, welcome, everyone. Um, I, my name is Jose Wendell. I work with the Cambridge Public Health Department, and I am very, very excited um, to have you here as we are talking about our very, very first Arts for Health grant opportunity. Um, it's been long in the making, and we're very excited to uh, work together with the arts community to help us share the health priorities for Cambridge for improving the health of community and address health and health equity and racism. And um, this work we couldn't do without our partners. We uh, received funding from the Cambridge Arts Council for this for this initiative, and uh, we have you know awesome technical support from our partners at the Met Metropolitan Area Planning Council. Um, and, um, you know, so it's a collaboration with a lot of folks and looking forward to have to the conversation uh, today. And um, I'd like to give, um, you know, others the opportunity um, to introduce themselves. Maybe um, I should start with my colleague from public health, Kristen, and then maybe then you can pass it on to the folks from the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. Does that work? That sounds great. Hi everyone, I'm so happy that you're here. My name is Kristen Ward. I, like Jose, am at the Cambridge Public Health Department. Um, I'm our department's performance management and quality improvement specialist, which essentially means um, that a big part of my job is coordinating work throughout the city of Cambridge related to our community health improvement plan, um, which is a big theme for this grant. Um, we'll have a little bit more information about what that is. We call it the CHIP, um, how it came to be and how it works with this grant a little bit later in the presentation. Um, so I think I can pass it off to, how about Claudia? Thank you. Um, hi everyone, my name is Claudia Zerasua. I am an arts and culture planner at MAPC and I'm a Cambridge resident, I'm a Port resident. So I'm excited to be uh, involved in this project. I'll pass it over to Annis. Thanks, Claudia. I'm Anna Sandukta. I'm the Assistant Director of the Arts and Culture Department at the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. We are a regional planning agency for the 101 cities and towns in Metro Boston. Um, and the work that we're doing to support this project is a collaboration between the Arts and Culture Department, the Public Health Department, and the Community Engagement uh, Division. Um, and I will pass it over to Sharon Ron from our Public Health Department. Hi all, I'm Sharon Ron. I'm a public health planner and at MAPC's public health team. Um, and we have been involved with the Cambridge Public Health Department on their CHIP supporting both the evaluation of the implementation of the plan and also supporting community engagement of, what, of which this project um, is a part. And I will hand it over to Emily. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Emily Torres Cullinane from MAPC as well, uh, Assistant or Direct Director of Strategic Co-Director of Strategic Initiatives, which means I oversee community engagement. So I'm really here um, with that eye of how to work with the artists that get chosen and um, make sure there's really good engagement and your artwork has a broad reach. Thank you for being here. Think. I think that's all of us. You say? Sorry, I'm still muted. Um, I, I think we were going to give the attendees an opportunity to introduce themselves. Um, maybe we can start with, um, I'm going to say Abigail. Hi, yeah. Hi, my name is Abby Neal, and I am an artist and an elementary arts educator based in Boston, printmaking and zines primarily. And my work kind of intersects with health in that I've been doing a lot of artwork related lately to both the Bread and Roses poem and about um, the... I also wrote a short zine recently about um, the history of the Black Panther Free Breakfast Program. Wonderful. Welcome, Abigail. Raina? Hi, everyone. My name is Raina. Um, I 
I'm artist. I teach traditional Chinese calligraphy and I also teach mindful doodle illustrations. Um, the pandemic brought me online, so I do those workshops online for the time being. Um, but yeah, we do a lot of like culture learning, um, especially with like neighboring companies and um, all over the US uh, to learn more about um, the ancient art of calligraphy, um, Chinese calligraphy specifically. Um, also um, some mindful exercises that I do with people um, for um, non-artists um, and getting them into uh, exposing or like really digging deep into their like creativity because I truly believe that everyone is creative. And uh, so it's been really fun to see um, people actually draw when they thought they couldn't. Wonderful, thank you so much, Zaina. Or is it Zana? Hi, yes, it's Zana, Zana. It all depends on where you're from. <laughs> um, I'm an artist out here in Maynard, Massachusetts, and I work primarily in painting, but I use photography and sometimes I combine the two into film and installations. Um, my work is about, it's an intersection between design, urban planning, and housing. Um, I'm really interested in public policy and how artists can uh, participate in that. And as a means to an end, I started the Maynard Film Festival to do small town shorts about how um, town hall and, and artists can work together in documenting that. Great, thank you. We're gonna keep, um, we're gonna try to flow through the intros. Um, Vicki? Hi, my name is, am I muted? Yes. No, you're good. <laughs> and Vicki, you, you muted yourself because you were good before. Yeah, there you okay. go. <laughs> Sorry, I'm Vicki Enright. I work as an illustrator and graphic designer I've done all kinds of projects. Um, the way I found out about this form of art is uh, when my work started to go down during last summer, um, I entered a contest out of the blue and it was the North Shore Community Development Coalition with Quam, that Punto Area Art Museum. And I won. So that was kind of interesting. I had never done this type of art, although I just did something for the Andover, town of Andover. They were having their 375th um, celebration of this town. And so I, you know, the pandemic really pushed me in different directions and that was fantastic. And I'd love to use my talents to help people in different ways. Thanks. Okay. Um, thank you. I'm gonna take one more intro, Raymond. Everybody else, um, I apologize if you could just put your name and a little bit about yourself in the chat. That would be great. And I did forget to intro um, our director of public health at MAPC, Barry Keppard, who is also on the line. So go ahead, Raymond. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Raymond Josue Rodriguez. I am the founder and creator of the Latinx Digital Wellness Center. Um, my agency was created as a need to identify services for LGBTQ Latinos, including Portuguese speaking folks. Um, we were created to do a conference. We do a three year, we're going on a third year conference all by requesting donations from folks in the cities um, where we incorporate the health and the arts. Um, a lot of work with films, short documentaries, short um, storytelling, and what we call novelas in our culture very particular of the Latino community um, and the LGBT issues, um, transgender awareness, activism work, um, HIV AIDS prevention. Um, so I was extremely excited when I saw this because it's down my alley and what I've been looking for. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you. So I'm just gonna give it back to uh, public health so we can hear the presentation and please feel free to put in comments and questions in the chat. Okay, thank you, uh, um, Emily. And um, so 
Thanks everybody for the introductions and I'll look uh, to the chat to learn more about you. So uh, it's my role now to um, introduce a little bit of the context of this grant. Um, so this funding came to us from the Cambridge Arts Council focused on the port neighborhood in Cambridge. And um, some of you, uh, my apologies if, if some of you know more about the port than I even do. I've worked in there in the port for a while. Um, but I am not from Cambridge, and if you're not from Cambridge, and if you're not from the port, you never know enough, but I will do my best. So, um, so the port is an area in Cambridge that is a historically um, diverse neighborhood. Um, it has um, a larger uh, population of Black um, African American residents, as well as Latino residents together, about 50% of the population, or even more before, it's uh, of course, unfortunately gentrifying as a lot of areas in the greater Boston area. So that is changing. So what is called the port uh, now used to be, uh, used to include two areas that were split up and together were called the port. One of them was, it was called, it was later called Cambridge port. And when in that split, they both um, received initial names. One was called, <coughs> Uh, we have some company. One was called uh, Area 4 and the other one was called Area 5. So Area 5 got the Cambridge Port name and Area 4 was called Area 4 for a really long time. And you will see, you will hear the port referred to as um, Area 4 as well. And But the old residents of the neighborhood kept calling it the port. And um, as a result of activism a number of years ago, that um, came uh, that name was, was returned to the neighborhood. So it was no longer called Area 4, um, but it's now back to being named the port. And um, so in addition to it being um, a diverse neighborhood, it also was historically a hub of the candy industry. Um, and the one candy company that's still there is Squirrel Brands. And um, sometimes if you walk on Main Street at the right time, you smell a distinctly sweet smell from candy being produced. I see Claudia nod. <laughs> Um, so I think that's, uh, that's kind of it. Um, I, I think people in the port sometimes feel press, uh, um, pushed out a little bit with, you know, the sort of like um, influence of um, all the biotech and all the other tech industries sort of encroaching upon their neighborhood. And I think it's, uh, you know, the grants is an opportunity to um, engage with the, with the neighborhood and, um, and, and its residents. So um, I think that's probably enough for this purpose. Um, so I'm going to give it back over to Annas to uh, go through the agenda. Thanks, Jose. Um, so just a quick overview, we're going to talk a little bit more about the details of this opportunity, the timeline, reminder of the submission elements we've asked for, and then an overview of the selection process and criteria, and then we'll open it up for Q&A. And I apologize, I'm going to try to move through this pretty quickly because I want you to have time to ask some questions, um, which is for the purpose of what we're doing here. So next slide. So the, this is Arts for Health, it's a call for art. We're envisioning um, $1,000 to $4,000 grants. We have a total of $9,000 to be allocated to develop creative, safe, accessible, culturally inclusive opportunities that engage Cambridge, Cambridge residents around strategies to improve mental health, healthy eating and active living and community and social resilience. And those are the three priority areas of the CHIP, which is the Community Health Improvement Plan. Next slide. Um, the call will be open from May 18th through June 8th. Applicants can submit up to two unique concepts that are in um, either one or more categories of media. Um, a maximum of one concept per artist will be funded. And ideally the artwork deliverables will be understandable and interesting to diverse communities across the city of Cambridge with consideration given to the engaging the residents of the um, port community, the port neighborhood. And um, Claudia is providing some additional information in the chat because the, the chip is a somewhat technical document. So we wanna make sure that there's some clarity around that. Next slide. Um, so in terms of like the range of ideas, we're very open. I don't think we have a specific uh, concept in mind. These are examples of creative engagement strategies that were developed by um, the first artist in residence at MAPC, Carolyn Lewinberg. So we have a 
art cart designed to look like a shoeshine cart that was used in Rockland. There's, um, she created viewfinders to engage residents around an open space and recreation plan in Everett. Um, there was a photo voice project that was actually a partnership with the public health department around a food improvement plan in Everett, a t-shirt, customizing t-shirt engagement in, um, I think in Cambridge around the Shannon Grant basketball tournament and a, um, a like in, a design your own coffee mug activity that was in Natick. And these are just like different ways that she came up with to think about how do you um, help residents engage with planning concepts and, and topics. And none of them are things that you would have to do, but they're sort of like a, a range of things that could happen in the times that where, where we're open. Um, and then, you know, I don't know if you want to share some of your thoughts and inspiration from your own. Yeah, activities. sure. Yeah, this was just uh, something I happened upon this weekend. Um, I was in New York City and there were some two things that I know ha had were going on in Madison Square Park that were caught my interest one of they both were accessible with QR codes and one is was a soundscape um, and the other one was um, uh, a virtual um, um, treasure hunt or scavenger hunt and um, and then, you know, unrelated in Washington Square Park, I happened upon a group of um, older residents who, I think this was sort of more self um, convened, but it was really awesome um, and having to do with community engagement and connection. Um, but there were um, folks that were getting together in the park to play music and, you know, people in with walkers and wheelchairs and um, all kinds of, and they were, clearly old, um, you know, rockers or, um, you know, people with, you know, from, from the 60s. And, you know, they have, a, they were having a grand old time and so happy to be out there. And, um, you know, I thought that was amazing way to um, engage people. Um, so that were just some things that, um, you know, I happened upon. I, I'm sure you guys have inspirations uh, all over the place. I think uh, as artists, you probably are better than, at that than, than I am, but I uh, just wanted to share some, some things that I came across. I think we just also wanted to share some examples that, uh, that are across different disciplines. You'll see dance represented, liter literary arts represented. Um, Anna's just shared a couple of examples. There's a Watertown uh, walking play, um, is a good example for community engagement. Um, there's this upper right image of a blanket that was made as, as a group, as a community effort um, to distribute among the community that's experiencing homelessness. Um, so yeah, just wanted to give you a sense of the broad range of ideas that um, could be applied for this project. Um, and I think we'll go to the next slide and we'll turn it over to Kristen to just talk a little bit more about the chip and what that is. Sure, I will try to keep this brief, but happy to answer any questions at the end. Um, so I'll give a little bit more background on the chip or um, the City of Cambridge's Community Health Improvement Plan. So the goal of this overall plan, it's something that we do every five years, and it's to improve the health of the city in the specific priority areas that were identified in our community health assessment, which is what you see on the left side of the screen. Um, we do this community health assessment also every five years, and it is this massive analysis. Um, we do a survey of residents, we hold a series of focus groups, and we review a ton of secondary data, which gives us a lot of information about both the strengths and the areas for improvement related to health in the city. Um, and based on what we found in our most recent community health assessment, which was completed last year, is that the top priorities for the residents of Cambridge related to health is community and social resilience, healthy eating and active living, and mental health with this cross-cutting theme of equity and ending racism. So um, the projects that we're funding through this grant are going to help highlight these issues. And if you have any questions at any point about what we mean by these priority areas, I'm happy to answer those at the end of the presentation. Thanks, Kristen. Thanks. All right, let's move on. So the, the timeline is that we're holding our 
information session today. Please submit any questions um, by June 1st, and we'll be compiling and posting our answers by June 2nd. Um, we'll share the email address that you can post those questions to at the end of the presentation. Our application deadline is June 8th, and we'll, um, we're hoping to have all of the selection finalized by June 30th and signing our grant agreements with the artists by early July. Um, and we're imagining that of the proposed engagements that, that the, engaging the community, the creative work will be in place in the fall. So it doesn't have to be for full two months, but this would be in the period between the 1st of September and the 1st of November. Um, next slide. We're only asking for a three page application. I know it's a short deadline, but it's not a lot of information we're asking for. So there's a cover letter that would introduce the team and the project idea, a timeline and funding request amount, and a page that includes the um, bio, team bio references and links to a portfolio. Uh, next slide. So, we're going to do the overview of the criteria, the selection criteria. Um, we want to emphasize that preference will be given to applicants who can demonstrate experience working with community-based organizations, um, communities of color, other segments of the population that have been treated unjustly by medical systems. So really trying to make sure that the equity, um, health equity and ending racism is part of how we're understanding the work. Next slide. So the, the criteria that we'll be using for decisions include the artistic merit of the body of work that's represented in the portfolio, um, the demonstrated experience working with multidisciplinary teams, strong conceptual skills that are demonstrated in the portfolio, and ability to create work that is sensitive to social, cultural, environmental, and historical contexts, the ability to translate artistic concepts for virtual settings in public space, knowing that we're still in this like kind of strange period in COVID, um, the completeness of the application and demonstrated experience meeting project deadlines and managing grant funding. Next slide. So we're gonna to do the selection process. The concepts will be reviewed by the MAPC team and an advisory committee made up of the Cambridge Arts Council representatives, the working group chairs for the community health improvement plan um, the a Margaret Fuller House representative, a community art center youth representative, and a representative from the Loop Lab. Um, and then the, they will kind of advise on the final selection, but that decision will be made in partnership with the Cambridge Public Health Department and the MAPC staff. Next slide. Um, for more information, we do have a project website up. Um, and Claudia, can you drop the link to that in the chat so folks have that? Um, it's at the bottom of the page and you'll get more information about the project context and the, um, the chip and, um, and the deadlines and things like that. So if, if you didn't catch it here, that is all available still on the website. Um, and yes, and then the last slide is just opening it up for questions. And I'm gonna share in the chat also this is the email address that you want to use to send any questions to. Um, but now we're going to just open up the floor and take questions that you might have. And we'll, we'll do our best to answer these questions today. Um, we're also going to have the recording of this and we will um, provide like a, a written document that has all of the questions and the final answers. Some of them we may need to get some additional feedback to, to give you the final answer. Thank you, Ennis. Um, now I'll open it up for the, the audience if there are any questions. I have a question. Go ahead. So um, I just want to see if I make sure I understood correctly. Um, so you guys are giving a total, you only have a total of $9,000. Is that correct? Or is it in that from that $9,000 pocket, you're going to break out to fund up to um, two different, up to two category, current categories. You can submit, yes, you can submit more than one concept. Um, you will receive funding for a maximum of one. Um, so yeah, so it's $9,000 total. 
where the grant amounts we're imagining will range from 1,000 to 4,000. So we're thinking we would fund between like two projects and nine projects, sort of depending on what comes in and how much funding is required by the, the projects that um, we're that we think would be good to move forward with. So we're keeping it a little bit open, um, but we will only fund one concept per artist. I don't know if that was clear. Does the grant include um, cost of materials? Um, I would say probably. Um, I also, yes, I mean, I, I mean, we haven't talked about that, but I would imagine um, it would. Um, I also should add that there's a potential for us to leverage other monies, but I'm not 100% sure we will be able to. We would encourage you to consider as part of the way that you think about what the funding request should include would be the cost of materials, the cost of your time, um, cost of transportation, just sort of like the things that would go into making this uh, a workable project. Um, and we, we're not asking you to break down all of the costs in, in your funding request because it's a short time period. And sometimes it's hard to create those detailed budgets, but as you're thinking through what this is gonna cost you or how much you would need for it, please consider all of those um, costs that you will incur. So when we say community engagement, it means that it needs to involve the community. Like it has to be like an activity that you do in, in the physical location, like a park, restaurant, community event, look, um, open spaces. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Um, you know, it could be a standalone project that interacts with the community on and off. It could be a film or recording that lives on online on, the, on a website. Um, yeah, it could be, be, cre be creative. Yeah, it could be materials be to people's houses, you know, all that stuff. The one thing that I should probably say is that, you know, if there's if this if one of these projects needs um you know marketing to the community that that we we talked about that that we you know would help with that 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 would not necessarily be on the artists to do that on their own vicky did you have your hand up at one point you have a question uh i did only but it was similar to um the man who just spoke which was so this is I know it's not necessarily because he sort of asked the same question about it. You want to engage people. It's not just something visual that they may or may not see. Um, for example, like a poster or posters that are throughout that area, that neighborhood. It wouldn't be, so, you wouldn't want something like that. You're more interested in, like he asked, engaging people somehow. I'm gonna answer that myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's kind of confusing whether you could create a, uh, like say maybe a, a book of portraits of people that, that live in that neighborhood or are you looking more for place making and being on site and engaging community that way? Or is, that, is it completely open to either of those? Um, I, I'll say that first we have to consider the situation that we're living in. So we are asking you to have some flexibility to whether it's a virtual um, experience or a public space uh, experience, whatever that that takes for, shape or or form of. Um, we'll be following the state guidelines. So if you know right now it's it's a little bit uh, the reopening. It's you know we're still trying to catch up on that and what it means. Um, Whereas, you know, a poster, Vicky, like you said, it is a form of engagement. Um, just think about how how inclusive it could be um, versus a performance or other types of, of engagement. Um, Zana, did I, 
Did I answer your question? I don't know if I, I feel like I lost the second half of your question. Well, it was, it's, um, it's about that community engagement. You could make it about the community. So therefore the community is engaged or if it's about the real actual on-site placemaking thing where you're interacting. Cause the examples were mostly like on the street interaction. So I'm not sure if either one works. Either yeah, one works. Okay. I don't, if I, I don't may, think so. um, because things um i i also wrote it in the chat but I, maybe you're not seeing the chat and i think ken also had the same question because it's very different to prepare something um you know that has to be in, in, on the street than it is on a, on a space so when we're looking for the cost if we have to rent a space or even if it's in a park we have to pay a license it's very different and um now if you say that it, it has to be also flexible to consider virtual um, I have two thoughts there. One is, again, the cost is very different. I sort of been teaching online, so I actually have a lot of things already going for me. But uh, also that makes me think it, it may not be so inclusive. So if we're trying to reach, uh, you know, uh, people in the community um, who might need this the, the most, maybe would not be able to access it virtually unless there is a whole effort put towards helping with that. So it's very, very, you know, the, the artistic idea could be one, but the media um, we're going to present changes a lot or when you're thinking of what the project is and what you need to fund that and what you need to work on. So it's kind of, a little, I'm a little lost. And then my other question in general is, would be like a one-time event, for example, for, for me or Ken, who are dancers, like, yeah. So um, is it a one-time event okay, or has to be recurring or, so it's all very different for planning purposes. So thank you. I'm sorry, Abigail had her hand up. I just want to make sure we get to Abigail. Yep. Um, yes, my question, oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead and we'll get to. Oh, my question might, be enlightening for some people, but I'm wondering uh, if your organizations can provide support on connecting us and linking us with local organizations and local spaces, because that's not an area I am as plugged into and would love to collaborate with like community centers and libraries and youth and family facing organizations to really embed what I have to offer into your uh, your community that you're focusing on. Thank you, Abigail. Um, it's reasonable for us at the health department and you know some of our call, we're plugged into a lot of different organizations and different networks. And I think that we could certainly serve as a connector for some of those things, yes. Um, and I did want to just share, we have had a little bit of a conversation about this idea of is it is a one time event enough. And I think the preference is that if it if there isn't a single event that there is a way that there's a little bit more of an ongoing communication so it would not be the only opportunity that the community would have to engage, but that there might be some additional outreach or, or opportunities for the um, community to participate communicate or participate or learn aside from that single event. Um, I, I see Raymond's hand is up. Hi, um, I guess I have kind of two questions since public health is here. Um, let's say like you do a pro um, project here and you might something that can continue to become um, something in the longer term? Um, are, the, are, the, are you guys able to do connections to other possible funding sources that can be implemented to um, or use as part of the existing project, especially with stuff with the Department of Public Health? Um, that's one question. And I guess the other question, I'm still confused as to the, the money part. So like, okay, so it's, I, I guess, what, so what they're, I'd, let's say there's five of us here. Um, like, are we submitting like 
a grant, like a, a proposal that's between, I have to pick an amount between $1,000 and no more than that, 9,000, or I have to be realistic that you guys only have $9,000 in that pocket and you have 10 people applying and those 10 people could range from anywhere between 1,000 to $2,000 projects. Is that kind of like, am I, I don't know if yeah, I'm asking it's, it. It's a lot of math. <laughs> um, so we do, so, okay. We have $9,000 for this grant funding opportunity, and we expect to, to distribute that in grant in different grants ranging from $1,000 to $4,000. So as an applicant, you have up to $4,000 to request for funding exactly. per concept. Does that clarify That's what I wanted to do, yeah. Okay. So per concept, I can request up to, uh, up to $4,000. Correct. So I have, I have, so if I have two concepts, I cannot exceed, let's say, two thousand for each concept, like an example. Um, you could actually submit two applications for two concepts that are each four thousand dollars. You would only uh, be considered for funding for one of them. Got it. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> so if you have two great ideas, submit for the two great ideas. Okay, <laughs> and then let's say filming stuff like that. Would me filming in the Ashton neighborhood and our restaurants or um, doing an event in a library or like public facility um, that that I like calling like casting call? Is that like consider like just in thinking in general? Would that be like the community engagement part of it? Um, there are certain things that are specific to your concept, and there's there are things that are part of the community engagement that the public health department is already doing that could be uh, contributing to your funding or to your Got funding, it. Okay. to your um, grant. Um, Great, Emily. Emily, did you have something you wanted yeah, to add? Yeah, so I just wanted to add a little bit too. Um, this is our first time doing a call for art. Um, in the past, um, it's just been challenging to engage with people on the topics that come out of this mm -hmm. uh, planning process. And so, so we want to be creative. We don't want to um, sort of put too much of a tight frame on it because we want to allow for creativity. But that's also really challenging because we just named like completely different types of artistic expression, and it's not apples to apples. Um, so um, pl please, we do sort of recognize that this is a little bit of sort of like a, a odd ask in the sense that it doesn't have like a very tight frame to it. But Raymond, to your point, I think, um, you know, if you were to suggest something that is like $4,000, it's like a one-time event um, where we can help with the outreach and the engagement and the communications and like finding the space, Someone else might have um, a poster idea, uh, like what Vicky was saying, that might be a less dollars that we can also choose. So what we end up choosing might be something that is a one-time event. Then there's something else that might be something that can live throughout the fall or live throughout the year, or it's something that's virtual. So uh, we are trying to play this sort of strange sort of puzzle game of trying to sort of pick and choose maybe like what three projects are really gonna build off of each other nicely. So to back to Claudia's point, or um, I think Jose said it, if you have really good ideas, just give us your ideas, try to put a, a dollar sign to it so we kind of understand where it falls in the spectrum. Um, and we would certainly, I think, um, if we have questions or things to clarify, we would go back to you. And the other thing too, you might consider, and I don't know if we put this in our documentation is scalability you know you might have like a certain idea and it could always be scaled up and in some cases it can be scaled down um, so that it might be something that you might want to address in your um, in your application um, I see you have your hand up will you uh Am I up? Okay, yes, I, I, I just had a question about how M, MAPC got involved in this. And I, I, I assume this is MCC, M, is Mass Cultural Council money? Um, and, then, and then the third question is, 
is the MAPC going to do continue to do this? And how does one get MAPC involved in their call for art? <laughs> or is this a one-time shot, I guess? Is that, is that enough questions? Uh, maybe, maybe. So I can, I mean, I can jump in there. So uh, MAPC got involved in this project uh, because our public health and our community engagement team were supporting the Cambridge Public Health Department as part of evaluating the CHIP and thinking about community engagement strategies. And because the Cambridge Arts Council had um, connected with the Cambridge Public Health Department to kind of say, like, I think this could be an opportunity for there to be some creative work. And so we helped the um, Public Health Department to put together an application to have the Cambridge Arts Council funding for this call for art. And we're now sort of also helping support the work of managing a call for art because that's not something that they've done before. So, um, you know, typically we're, we're in this role of sort of supporting municipal entities with doing the things that they're trying to do. And so that's, that's where this is coming where we're coming into this from, um, but it, it's exciting. And I think we're hopeful that we can continue to provide this kind of support for calls for art. I don't know that it's like a one and done and this will never happen again, um, but it, it is sort of an experiment. We're learning from it as we go. Um, I did just wanna also, you know, sort of validate I think what Raymond you were saying is is I think it's helpful in to think about the ways that you engage with people through different elements of your artistic process and maybe look at those to think through how can I um, make that engagement an opportunity for people to be learning about this these public health initiatives um, so that it's not it, maybe it's not just like that they see a final product, but there might be other points where there's an opportunity for learning and connection built into the, the stages of how of your artistic processes. And maybe I could add something to that. So I think it's important to think like, you know, our three health priority areas, like they can sound really complex, but um, you know, one of them is, is mental health and, you know, anything that helps people connect or be physically active or, do a bunch of other things help support mental health so it's not always you, you know doesn't have to always be very complex um, resilience is a lot about community connection so anything that an artist does that helps build connection i think contributes to resilience and then there's also active uh, healthy eating and active living and so um, again active living there's a lot of um, you know possibilities there from dance to, you know, investigating the community. Uh, um, and, um, and in terms of healthy eating, like maybe food access is a, is a topic that, you know, people feel uh, drawn to. So I just wanted to give some, a little bit of, you know, practical, easier connections that you might want to, you know, you might be able to jump off of. Are you done? Yeah. Yeah, I wanted um, to ask about geographically. So if we think of this in a, in a physical setting, either outdoors or indoors, is the, the limits of the places we could choose should be within the city of Cambridge or are there any particular um, other, other things we need to consider? Um. Short answer, yes, within Cambridge. The intention behind the, the call for art is to engage Cambridge residents um, around the community health improvement plan. So ideally, um, we'd like to, the work to be done, um, installed, performed, read um, within Cambridge. Awesome, but we could live, I live in Arlington. So yes, I, I usually I taught in Cambridge when I was teaching in person. I was teaching at the Jose Mateo Ballet Theater. And so um, so that that's still fine if I just- Yes, say. yes. Your, your residency is in, not a, an issue. Um, it's just the work has to be delivered. 
in Cambridge. Abigail? Yeah, my question was, are we able to kind of look in on one particular part of the population of Cambridge? For example, my I was thinking about maybe some ideas that would engage with families and kids particularly. Um, and is it possible to engage and zero in on a specific segment of uh, Cambridge's population or the port's population? Or do we, is it available to everybody? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, and I'd actually like to address that. Yeah, short answer, yes. You can definitely hone in on a specific population. Um, we have those three priority areas listed that resiliency, mental health, and healthy eating, active living. Our plan and our priority overall is to talk about health equity. Specifically, we talk a lot about racism, but we do mean equity in the broadest sense. So, you know, if it's something that deals with ableism or, um, you know, anti-Semitism or gender issues, anything like that, um, we are very open to projects that, you know, specifically focus on one population that may be more greatly affected by a certain issue. A general population is also fine, but um, yeah, it's, it's okay to get more focused than that. Um, are there any other questions? I know we have a couple of folks on the call who've been quiet and it's fine, you can just listen, but I um, want to make sure you feel like you have space to ask questions or get feedback. Nana, are you raising your hand? I, I have a question. Yeah. I, oh, go ahead. Do you want to go? Go ahead. Oh, <laughs> um, really quickly. So thank you for providing the examples in the chat. Um, are there any other instances of other examples um, that you guys like really are gravitating towards um, that are not provided or is there anything else or? Um, no, I, I think that's just, a couple of ideas we've seen, but it's not limited to that. Okay. Um, I had a, a question. It's um, for, so like if you could want to do some kind of conceptual work where you could flyer the port, the neighborhood with a question, and then they could um, respond either from one of those uh, you know, call in or email or like you pose, posit a question and then they come back, they contribute that way, and then you present your findings. Is that something that would be uh, acceptable? This is the question. Being more on a conceptual part of the art spectrum there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yes, okay, great. Nikki, are you raising your hand? Yeah, I was just wondering if, like, if there was something visual that was not an interactive thing, but you needed, wanted, especially for the Punto neighborhood. Did I say Punto? I meant the um, port neighborhood. Um, would we, is there a contact person that we could uh, ask for, like, perhaps we wanted to design into something resources like? food, you know, because I'm guessing that that court neighborhood ha is poor, or I, I don't really know yet, I haven't investigated, but, you know, if they had um, access to resources like uh, mental health, free mental health uh, organizations, or, um, you know, if you're having problems with food, you know, area, you know, organizations where you could get food or access to something, could that be implemented into the design somehow or maybe on the backside or, you know, uh, if it's something visual that's not necessarily 
interactive for the community, but certainly something that somebody sees on the way to them wherever they go. So is there somebody that I could um, contact that would have, because it seems to me they, they don't have as much access to resources as maybe some of the uh, other neighborhoods of Cambridge. Um, Otherwise this wouldn't be as important. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, so through the, once an artist is selected, you will be working with us, MAPC, the project team, and the Cambridge Pub Public Health Department team, Kristen and ESA. So for accurate information about resources for a specific topic, um, a phone number, a QR code, information like that, we would consult with Kristen and ESA. Um, okay. Thank you. Yeah, I think I, I just want to reiterate what I think I'm hearing, which is you're sort of going into the territory of thinking about what's the engagement strategy or sort of like, what is there some, if we're, if we're, what's the purpose of the engagement? Who is it exactly? Why are we engaging them and what? And then um, I think what you're saying is that there's some other uh, strategy that you could sort of add on an artistic piece. I think maybe that's what you're saying is that you're sort of wondering what sort of other opportunities are there, what other engagement strategies are there um, so that you can sort of like tie the artistic piece in. Um, so it is a bit of chicken and, I feel like it's a chicken and egg situation where we're asking you to be creative and come up with an artistic expression and then we could together as a team come up with like what that vehicle is of engaging people and what are some some of the things that like you could add on to to make it so that you you're you know if it's food access that is an issue is that's the thing that you want to highlight could we then have something where we're also like giving food so um i feel like we're flexible in the space of um brainstorming with you um and at the current moment we don't have a particular event or something that we're doing, um, but it is something for us to potentially think about. Uh, if we have more information on that, we will we will share that. Um, so I just want to know we only have about five minutes left. So um, Raymond, I see you have your hand raised, and we'll um, pause. You. Yeah, thank you. Um, just briefly, I noticed I hear themes, um, and for example, I hear food. Um, and I had I, I had a list of a few things that I had for sample, and I noticed a couple of people have similar ideas. Um, are there any benefits of people connecting to share their ideas to see how they can work together and collaborate to better um, come up with a plan? I mean, I know at least I'm interested in meeting those who are interested in doing food activities. Um, that's, that's one of the things that I wanted to do. Um, and so I'm just throwing that out there. I don't know. I mean, usually networking and collaborating, we, we, it's proven to, you know, reach and do more for the community. So just throwing that out there. <laughs> Kristen, did you want to answer that? Yeah, I think that we had discussed. So there are a couple things. Um, one is, you know, the collaboration, like prior to, um, possibly getting one of the grants, in which case you definitely can apply as a, a group or a couple people can apply together. I think we agreed on that, right? Yeah. Um, so you are definitely welcome to do that. And we hadn't talked about this, but since you're, I think this is a really good point is that once the grantees have been selected, um, I think that we should come up with some sort of forum to make sure you all can be collaborating with each other and you know, talking throughout the process so that you can get to know one another as well. So thank you. And I would also just add something. So like, you know, I think anytime you're working with food, it becomes a little tricky. I hate to be the public health, you know, naysayer, but this is actually, you know, not even our department, but um, it sort of falls under us, but it's a separate department. It's a, um, inspectional services. So they're pretty strict um, requirements for doing like stuff with food um, in the city, especially if it's foods that if it's food that needs to be consumed or is offered to be consumed. So not to. So again, I, I don't want to make it too complicated, but 
um, I think that sometimes may be more difficult than um, than it would, you know, we would like it to be. Um, so we have about three minutes left, and I I am hearing a little bit about questions of like what is the overall sort of support and how we're connecting in with the people who know what's happening in this process. And I did want to offer some opportunity to, to, for Kristen or Sharon to sort of talk through like where this work is falling in relation to the work that's happening for the um, community health improvement plan, because there are these uh, working groups who have co-chairs and they're meeting and they're finalizing that plan. And then there'll be, you know, implementation and engagement. So if you could just say briefly like how this will fit in. Um, and for those of you with your hands raised, could you put your questions in the chat so we have a record of them and then we'll make sure that we respond to those as part of our um, final FAQ. Kristen, do you wanna talk a little bit about where the CHIP co-chairs are or would you want me to sort of take that? Yeah, our just so very briefly, so people know we have these three priority areas and they are staffed by two co-chairs, one person at the health department and then another partner in the city. And then there are about anywhere from six to 15 additional people in the city who are on each of those work groups. Um, and what they're doing right now, they have objectives and strategies and they have just started working on the implementation of that plan. So it's not public yet. We're still working on just, you know, tweaking some of the language and, and the report itself, which will be public sometime in June. Um, but they're working on the different strategies that are about like policy making and getting different resources out the, to the community and all of that. So um, related to this grant, I will say when that does become public, we'll probably need the applications and before then anyway, um, they just really need to relate to the overall topic. It doesn't necessarily need to have a one-to-one -one relationship to the specific activities that those work groups are working on. Um, but I will say, you know, that group can be a valuable resource as you yeah. go through the process. Um, I'm just about getting off of something. Oops. I think that answered your question. So, um, Saida, I see your question in the chat. Do these need to be individual artist pro projects? No, you can definitely collaborate. Just keep in mind that the, the amount that you're asking for should cover the cost of all collaborators. Um, and I think we're at time. So thank you all for coming and feel free to send us additional questions as they come up send them in by June 1st and we'll post our answers by June 2nd. And um, I really look forward to seeing all of the submissions. It's really exciting. Thank you for coming. <laughs>